Nothing's going to hurt you the way the words do as they settle neath your skin. Kept on the inside with no sunlight, sometimes the shadow wins. But I wonder what would happen if you say what you want to say and let the words fall out. Honestly, I want to see you be brave with what you want to say. That's how it starts. So here's my first question for you today. Do you know what you want to say? I mean, Sherry set me up for this perfectly. Do you even know what you want to say? Or perhaps is what you are saying, or even what you think you want to say, still a byproduct of a life you've lived up till now where you've basically been on autopilot because you made some decision and you keep thinking you have to live it? I think there's a lot of people in this world who don't say what they want to say. And this is not a license, by the way. This song is not a license to go around insulting people. <laughs> Just say what you want to say. That dress is ugly. That's not what we're talking about, right? We're talking about what's inside of you that you haven't said yet, haven't done yet. And, and yes, this whole month has been about giving ourselves the opportunity to really pay attention, to dig in, to go exploring. Am I living the life I want to live? Am I doing what I want to do in my life? Do I still think somehow, I was taught at the Catholic Church, that delaying gratification has any use in my life whatsoever? Anybody still living the delaying gratification model of life where we put it off till later? You know, I went home this week. I, I, I actually went back to, to the East Coast to see my aunt first who was suffering from uh, dementia. And she spent her whole life saving, 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 saving so that when they retired, they could do things. Well, by the time they retired, she had dementia. And she never got to do most of the things she wanted to do. And now it's a very sad picture of what's going on in their lives. Enough said. There's the lesson. Learn it. You are here to be happy. Do you know that? That's really why you're here. You're here to be happy. You're here to live a fulfilling life. You are here to be passionate about what you're doing because all of that's available. So if it's available, why would we not take it? So say what you want to say. Are we honest with ourselves when, we, when it comes to what's on the inside? And then the next question is, what stops us from owning our truth? Sometimes it's just fear. Maybe what you really want to do with your life scares you. I have to give it over to Eric Bork. Where are you, Eric? To Eric Bork and Margaret Owens. They are doing something. I can say this, right? Sure. Everybody knows this now, or they're about to. Um, <laughs> they're doing something that would scare the crap out of most people. They are getting, they're, they're moving out of their home right here in Thousand Oaks. I guess getting rid of everything or as much as they can fit in their car, driving to New York City and starting over in New York City. Because Margaret got her degree in musical theater and it's what she's wanted to do her whole life. Be on Broadway, act, sing, dance, write. And Eric is married to her, so he's going. Um, <laughs> no, and Eric gets to move to New York too and start not over, but... Start from that point in a brand new place with all new opportunities. That's scary. Would that scare some of you? Wouldn't it? To just sell your house, be done, move somewhere, go there. <laughs> Mindy's like, sounds great. <laughs> so what stops us from owning our truth? From actually, what really stops us from actually being able to say, I want to do this without, I want to do this but... I can't because boom, 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 boom. I want to do this. This is what's in me to do. So last week, I asked you all, are you willing to feel your feelings? And we've talked about this already. Our theme is freedom. And I've wanted this month for me to be a month of freeing myself up from any of the misunderstandings I have about my own life. To be free to honestly answer the questions that have been circling me for a number of years now. Certainly the pandemic came along, gave me a lot of time to think about it. And 
I ha hadn't answered many of them, but they, they were still stirring up there. So I wanted the freedom to actually say what I need to say. Say what I want to say, let the words fall out, and be brave enough to say, this is how I feel. This is who I am. This is what I want to do with the rest of my life. Or let's just say, this is what I want to do with today. And this is where I want to direct myself. So, of course, you know, are you willing to live the truth comes with, do you know what the truth is? So the title of my talk today is, Why Hold Back? And I love when Laurie Savage found this uh, slide for me and she sent it to me because that's kind of me standing on that high dive. I don't know, uh, where are you, Craig? Back here. Yeah, Mr. Olympic Diver. Um, I could not dive off of a high dive, ever, to this day. I, I, I've, I've jumped off a high dive. Anybody have problems with the high dive? It's like right up there with snorkeling for me. And I, I, I just couldn't do it. I could jump off the high dive, but the thought of diving in my head, head first, it just, I, I, I have an image of me trying it and like still falling and sitting into the water. Um, so that's scary to me. But, but the real question is, do I just believe that because that's what happened when I was a little kid? Or could I possibly climb up to a high dive down, although my arms are already starting to sweat? Um, but could I climb up there and just jump off? <laughs> no. <laughs> but why hold back? <laughs> so that's, that's, that's the talk. Why hold back what is in you to do? Why hold back from being willing to hear some secrets about yourself that only you know? You and the divine, of course, the infinite universe. There's something inside of you, as the song says, that is asking you to say what you want to say. Let these words fall out. Just be brave enough to say, I'm going to get in my car, drive to New York City, and see what happens. I mean, what could go wrong? <laughs> Nothing. It can only go right from here. So today, I'm going to talk about Broadway a little bit. And that's, I know that's unique for me. but. I want to start with a quote that a friend of mine said when I arrived in New York, said to me, I love, no, from here, before I left, <laughs> said to me, I love that you go back to New York City every now and then and check in on your past. <laughs> now, just think about that. No, don't feel sorry for me. <laughs> right? So, you know, I go back to, to New York City and check in on my past. But the truth is, I don't. Well, no, the truth is, I used to. That's what I'd do. I'd go back to New York City and I'd be like, I did a show in this theater, I did a show in this theater. Oh yeah, remember when this happened? Remember? Kevin, he hates when we go back together because I'm just constantly, and he has to sit, stop me every two minutes. I've, I've heard the story, James. I know that you did this. Um, because that's what I tended to do. Not so much this time. It was very interesting what happened to me this time um, because I had a real question in my heart. Is this something I want to do again? And so my friend's saying, it's nice that you go back there every, every now and then to check in on your past, but this time it wasn't. This, this time it was, I went to New York City. I won't even say back there, because it's a very different city. I went to New York City to see if it had a future for me, to see if there was something there that I still wanted, if there was something there that I wanted to lean into, not remember. And so it was very interesting because one of the shows I saw, which was Kimberly Akimbo, was in the Booth Theater where I made my Broadway debut. And I was sitting there, and I was all by myself seeing the first three shows, and I was sitting there, and I'm looking at the stage, and I'm remembering myself on that stage, but, but I couldn't. I was like, I was trying to see myself I was in a show called Very Good Eddie at the Booth Theater, and I opened act two with what's called a bantar. And it was this big production number, and it was just me and my guitar. And I tried to see my a bantar. It was a banjo, but with a guitar for the people like me that couldn't play a banjo, but they put the strings on it as though it was a guitar, so it was called a bantar. Most people didn't know that, but now you all do. So I'm trying to remember the little, the, 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 the 20, 
three-year-old me that stood on that Broadway stage making my Broadway debut with my father and his new wife up in, his, up in one of the boxes. And I'm looking up at the box, trying to remember my father sitting there and being center stage as the curtain came up in this fabulous tuxedo, because it was in the 1920s, just starting my guitar. And then everybody joins me, and then we do this gigantic dance of which I was center stage to doing it. I couldn't. I, I couldn't really picture it. I was just like, I knew I did it. I knew I was there, but it was a different theater. It was a different show. There were different people. I was like, wow, so this memory doesn't really have much for me other than been there, done that. And then the show happened, and oh my God, what a brilliant show. It won the Tony for Best Musical and Best Actress. It was such a brilliant, brilliant, beautiful show. And the theme of the show was... Take your journey now. Take your moment now. Now is your time to do what is yours to do. Because it's about a woman who is 16 years old, but she looks like she's 70 because she has a disease that ages her throughout her life. And they usually only live to 16. And it was her 16th birthday. So it was a brilliant play, brilliant musical, very funny, very touching. And I was like, I feel really good in this theater not because I used to be here. Even walking by the stage door, I walked by the stage door and just trying to remember myself going in and out of that door. And as I left that theater, I was walking through Schubert Alley and walked through the, the um, alley where the Minskoff Theater was, which is where I did the famous production of West Side Story. And I was trying to see myself at the stage door because I used to come out that stage door and there would be tons of people there all waiting for autographs from the stars of the show, and I was one. And I'm, I stood there watching the stage door and people coming out of it, and I thought, what did that feel like at 25 now, signing autographs outside the stage door and trying to get to my dinner break? I couldn't remember it. I was like, it feels like it was fun, I guess, but I don't think I had fun then doing it. And I'm, So there was this thing going on inside of me, and it wasn't that... I have gone back to New York and said to myself, God, I never, I'm so glad I left. I never need to be here. Was I saying that truthfully? Or was inside me the dominoes already turned so that that was the best way for me to explain why I was no longer there? The best way for me to say there's nothing for me to do here. But there was still something in me. This time has been the most glorious experience for myself because I didn't have to remember the Booth Theater or the Minskoff Theater. I didn't have to remember the Schubert Theater where I went to see Some Like It Hot. I didn't have to remember that theater where I got to do cor a chorus line. And even sitting in that theater, I was like, it feels small. I remember the chorus line theater feeling so big when I had my first performance in a chorus line. It was like giant, giant Broadway hit. And it just felt like a theater, another theater. And I had this great awakening sitting there like, this is all really good. It's all become this. One playing field of pure, infinite possibility. What do you want to do with it? So this time, it was not about my past. What, is, what excited me was that this time, it was about what was in front of me. The shows I was seeing. And I brought this for you. These are the shows I saw. But they're in backward order. If you go to the right, if you go to your right, Some Like It Hot was the first show I saw. And I, I'm going to be a commercial today. Every one of these shows was brilliant. You need to go see them when you, if you go to New York. The second one was Funny Girl with Leah Michelle, which is really why I went, too, because my friend was in it, and I wanted to see Leah Michelle do Funny Girl. And if there's ever an experience of watching someone tap into their God self, it was that performance. And I was like, I hope this isn't a letdown because everybody said it's like the second coming. Well, it was. It was unbelievable, that, that girl, what she did on that stage. It was amazing. And then Kimberly Akimbo. And then The Cottage, which I hadn't planned on seeing. It doesn't even open until tomorrow night. It was in their final previews. The girl in the picture with me, her name is Gail Testa. Those of you that take spirit breath know. She has been a member of this center for like five years and has never come here. She lives in New Jersey. And when she heard I was going to New York, we discussed. I said, well, come on in and see a show with me. So I have never met this girl who's been a member of the Global Truth Center for five years. 
watches every Sunday. I know you're watching today, Gail, and you didn't know I was going to put your picture up there. Um, uh, and she, she's in spirit breath, right? Pretty much every, every day. Um, that's the, that's the, the effect we can have in the world. They don't have to be here. You don't have to show up. The world is so open to anything you want to do, be, or have. So it was an incredible week. Um, but as I said, it became clear to me that everything was in front of me, not behind me. I had the freedom. I have a freedom to do it all again if I choose. And not even do it again, but to do something new, whatever that is, whatever that is. But as I am now, I get to do it as me, who I am today. And here's the thing. I've had a lot of practice in this thing called science of mind. I know that what I put my mind to, I can accomplish. I know that what is in my heart to do, I can do. I know who I am, except when I don't. How many of you find that happening? Right? So I know all of this, and I'm thinking, wow, this is really amazing. So let me get to the last show I saw, The Cottage. There's a young lady, Tony, Tony Award nominee, um, who was the star of Legally Blonde. Her name is Laura Bell Bundy. And I didn't know, but she was starring in this new play on Broadway. So I called her, and I said, I, I definitely want to have dinner with you or something. And she said, when are you coming to the show? I said, oh, I'll come. So I came on my last night, Friday night, and Gail joined me there. So... In that show is Eric McCormick, the star of um, Will and Grace. Um, I think Moffat, uh, Joseph Moffat, one of the stars of Saturday Night Live, and Laura Bell Bundy, and then a number of other actors. It was one of the most hilarious, funny, amazing plays I've ever seen. I laughed so hard I was sick. It is so great. It opens tomorrow night. I cannot wait to see it. The audience was just, I mean, I have not heard laughter like that in a theater for a very long time. I mean, some of the laughter was so long, the actors just had to stand in place while we just finished laughing. I mean, there's, there's a scene where a pregnant woman has some gas, and it went on for five minutes. And, 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 and I don't even find, excuse me, fart jokes funny. And, but I could not stop. And, and now I'm feeling embarrassed that I'm laughing at this woman who's having a problem. And the audience was just, I mean, you're all kind of smiling now thinking about it. But it was hysterical. And of course, it was directed by Jason Alexander from Seinfeld. So of course that kind of joke's gonna go. And afterwards when I had breakfast the next day, yesterday, with, with Laura Bell, she said, oh yeah, he wanted that to go on for 10 minutes. <laughs> and it was great. And she said, but boy, he really knew what he was doing. And Jason Alexander has directed this brilliantly. So um, here's what was funny. So I go backstage after the show and in the green room was Eric McCormick, Jason Alexander, Laura Bell Bundy, and I was out back there. And Laura, um, Laura knows me as her minister who used to have a history in theater. But most of the people in that room that knew me knew me as an actor who somehow became a minister, <laughs> which they really can't put together. And it made me think, who do I know myself as? Am I the actor? Am I the Broadway actor? I mean, somebody even said, oh my, I saw you in West Side Story. And I, my first response was, wow, you're that old. And I was like, why did you just say that? <laughs> you know? So, yeah, they know me as an actor, but Laura Bell knows me as a minister who has, has had a history. But the real question is, who am I? Who do I know me as? And here's the thing. What I came to was, I kind of know me as all of it. And my struggle is that I keep trying to think, I keep thinking, I have thought that I need to make a choice, that I need to do one thing over the other. And yet, when I became a minister, I bought a theater. We bought a theater so that I could stay a theater person while I ran my ministry, all became one thing. When we sold the theater, that hasn't happened as much for me, which is why these last six years, I've had so much yearning inside to act and to sing and to, 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 to direct and to write. But the bigger question was the freedom to be who I know I am. And that's what I bring to you today. I'm all of it. I'm not the actor who turned into a minister, and I'm not the minister who used to be an actor. I'm standing here today as a minister who is also an actor and a writer and a director 
and a producer and a father and all sorts of things. And it's that freedom, the freedom to be able to say, many, how many people were in my Tara Brock class? Raise your hand. Great. Then you all know that radical acceptance, it's okay to say, I'm an actor. I accept that. That doesn't negate, I'm a minister. I accept that. How do we pull it all together? And most of that is, you know, what are we waiting for? Why do we identify ourselves as one thing, throw all of our other desires in the background and let them annoy us? <laughs> Don't they annoy you sometimes? Right. So I'm here to say the freedom that we need to really glean is the freedom to be everything that we are. Everything that we are. Laura Bell left. She and her husband moved out of L.A. They just didn't want to be here anymore. So they bought this farm an hour outside of New York. It's like, I forget what she said to me, 30 or 40 acres. She showed me all these pictures. Then she had a baby, and she has this beautiful baby, Huck. He's so cute. She, she, she's having this great life. Then she gets a phone call to star in a Broadway show. She was like, it's so funny. It's like I had to leave L.A. to get my career back going. Um, I said, yeah, my husband had the same thing. I convinced him to move to Los Angeles. All he wanted to be was on Broadway. But I convinced him to move to Los Angeles because I wanted to study religious science with Dr. Walker. So we moved to Los Angeles. But that's the way the universe works. When, that, when the, what's inside you really needs to get out, what happened? He gets a phone call to go meet with Julie Taymor because he was in LA to go audition for The Lion King. Got it, and he's on Broadway for four years while I lived in LA. It was a great relationship. <laughs> it worked great though. Why did it work great? Because he was doing what he wanted to do, I was doing what I wanted to do, and we gave each other freedom to be all that we wanted to be. So, Confucius said, the will to win, the desire to succeed, the urge to reach your full potential, these are the keys that will unlock the door to personal excellence. Confucius. I have a will to win. I have a desire to succeed. And I have an urge to reach my fullest potential, which, believe it or not, hasn't even, I've not even scratched the surface of what I know is inside of me. And no, I did not pick this picture because it's all about West Side Story. It's the first one that came up, <laughs> honestly. But then I thought, it's perfect. And Tony Robbins said, don't labor forever over the question of how or if you can do it. Studies have shown that most successful people make decisions rapidly because they are clear on their values and what they really want for their lives. So, in closing, say what you want to say. Do you want to be the fullest expression of yourself? How many people want to be the fullest expression of themselves? Yes. And the rest of you, you don't want to be the fullest expression of yourself? Yeah, she's like, all right, fine. <laughs> Did everybody's hand, does anybody not want to be the fullest expression of themselves? And you may be afraid of that. It may be like, whoa. Anybody ever hear themselves say, if I ever let out what's in here, <laughs> the world wouldn't know what to do with me. Who cares? The world doesn't need to know what to do with you. You need to know what to do with you. So I just ask you, you know, looking at this, this quote here, don't, don't, don't spend the rest of your life asking yourself, can I do it? Just do it. What could go wrong? Margaret and Eric could sit around forever for the next year contemplating, could we move to New York? Maybe we could move to New York. Margaret didn't do that. She just said, Eric, we're moving to New York. <laughs> then Eric called me and said, I think we're moving to New York. <laughs> and I have such, such respect for them. Such, I, I am so in awe of what they are doing. Now, here's the thing. I don't want, and this is the good news. This, I believe you some really good news. I don't want to move back to New York City. I don't. I don't want to move, live in New York City. I, I know that now. And when I went there, I was already looking at apartments of having a second place in New York. I don't want to live there. I want to make sure that any time I go to New York City with a show that I've written or I'm starring in or whatever, it's in the budget to get me a great place on the upper, or upper east or west side away from Times Square that I can get down to when I need to go to the show. 
I'm clear now. I'm clear now. It's all possible. Everything is possible. I have the freedom to create whatever life I want to create. I even have this great idea that if I do do a Broadway show and I'm back on Broadway, that I'll just do my Sunday service because of the time difference from whatever stage I'm of the theater I'm on. And it will be in my contract that on Sunday mornings, I have to give a lecture from the center of the stage that will show up right there. I can do it any way I want, yes? Yes! Right. right. And most of you will come to Broadway anyway to see it, right? Yes! Yeah, so, so that's the freedom that I feel so good about. You good with this, Corrine? Good. <laughs> so here's the thing. At the end of this, he says, because they are clear on their values. Do you know the only, clear, the only clarity you have to have about your values? That you know who you are. This, this right here, remember who you are? This is the centerpiece of this entire philosophy. It should be the centerpiece of your whole life. When you really remember who you are, nothing is off the table. When you remember who you are, there is nothing you can't do. There is no one you can't be when you remember who you are. And if you're having challenges, and if you're afraid, and if you're not feeling so successful or that you can do it, get to a practitioner. Get to a minister. Get to someone who can sit there and slap you around a little <laughs> and remind you who you are. I had breakfast with Laura Bell yesterday morning, and I was sitting there, and what she did, she doesn't notice it, but I'm noticing all these people walking by us, staring at her, and then turning to one another and going, oh my God, that's... And so finally I said it to her. I said, you know, it's so funny. I said, you're not even noticing it, but all these people are passing us, like pointing out to you. And she, goes, she, goes, and she, she looked at me, she went, and yet what do we really know? We're all God. And I was like, who's the minister sitting at this table? <laughs> um, and then she told me she wants to get on, keep, stay on her journey of learning more about this philosophy. Because this philosophy... My dear, dear, dear friends, this philosophy changes lives. Not just learning it, though. I've learned a lot. I feel like this week I've lived it profoundly as I've looked around and realized who I am and that anything, it's all my choice. I'm a choice to do, to be, to have, to create, to live anything I choose to live. And anything to the contrary is me stepping off of principle and not remembering who I am. So for me today, I want to leave you by telling you, I know who you are. I know that anything inside of you that's ready to come out is ready to be known and expressed and successfully lived. So let's do it. Let's say what we want to say and let the words come out honestly. I want to see us all be brave with what we want to say. Namaste. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.